A blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is Tuesday in the 12th week in Ordinary Time. Our Mass presider today is Reverend Father Aris Martin Jun SVD. Our Eucharistic celebration and devotion to St. Padre Pio will now begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, today we celebrate the feast, the memorial of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, Jesuit, who had a special devotion to the Eucharist and took good care of the sick. Today, God invites us in the table of the Word and the table of the Eucharist that we may experience a deeper communion in our spiritual life in order that we may be less unworthy of this grace. Let us recognize our sinfulness. Beg God for his pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the intentions of this Mass, for our own intentions, and the eternal repose of Denis Domingo. O God, giver of heavenly gifts, who in St. Aloysius Gonzaga joined penitence to a wonderful innocence of life, grant through his merits and intercession that though we have failed to follow him in innocence, we may imitate him in penitence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent envoys to Hezekiah with this message. Thus shall you say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, Do not let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you by saying that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. You have heard what the kings of Assyria have done, to all other countries, they doom them. Will you then be saved? Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord, and spreading it out before him, he prayed in the Lord's presence. O Lord, God of Israel, enthroned upon the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he sent to taunt the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands and cast their gods into the fire. They destroyed them.
because they were not gods, but the work of human hands, wood and stone. Therefore, our Lord, our God, save us from the power of this man, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in answer to your prayer for help against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have listened. This is the word the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, laughs you to scorn, the virgin daughter of Zion. Behind you she wags her head, daughter Jerusalem. For out of Jerusalem shall come a remnant, and from Mount Zion survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not reach the city, nor shoot an arrow at it, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast up siege works against it. He shall return by the same way he came, without entering the city, says the Lord. I will shield and save the city for my own sake, and for the sake of my servant David. That night, the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and went back home to Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, the recesses of the north, is the city of the great king. God is with her castles. Renowned is he as a stronghold. God upholds his city forever. O God, we ponder your mercy with your temple. As your name, O God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth of justice your right hand is full. God upholds his city forever. We now honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And those who enter through it are many. 
how narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, and the readings of today reinforce the life of this holy man whose care for the sick primarily is coming from a deep interior listening to God. In the first reading, very interestingly, like our time, during the time of the people of God, a lot of the people were presenting themselves to be the true God. Like our time, a lot present themselves to be the true prophet, the true God, the true appointed son or anointed son of God. But in the first reading, very clearly, the God who is living, the God of the people of God, Israelites, made himself known and validated himself to be the true God through listening. It is the listening God who is a true God. In the first reading, the king of Assyria was challenging the people of God, tell to your God, he will not be opposing us. But the people of God now rallying and trusting in Him, the people prayed and said, Lord, listen to our prayer. Open your eyes to see our condition. And towards the end of the first reading, what validated, what proved to be the true God of Israel is that God is listening. It is when we listen that we become true human beings. It is when God listens that He becomes a true God. It is when a husband starts listening to his wife that he becomes a true husband. Truth is validated by listening. In our world, which is so noisy, we are once again reminded in the first reading of the day that if you hold the truth, that if you want to be true, if you want to be genuine, if you do not want to be fake, if you want to be closer to God, start listening. That made Saint Aloysius Gonzaga a true son of God, a saint. Before he would go to his apostolate, he would always spend a lot of time through interior prayer, listening to God. And that is why the gospel of today was very clear. Jesus was saying, do not give to the dogs anything that is holy, or do not give the pearl to the swine. In order for us to better understand this, during the time of Jesus, the dogs and the swines, the pigs, are considered to be unclean animals. And if you want to put down somebody else, you call them, you are a dog. You are a pig. 
Why? Because during the time of Jesus, they believe that dogs and pigs do not listen. They get so wild. They destroy. That is why Jesus is presenting to us the opposite of holiness is to be stubborn. The opposite to be a pearl in the kingdom is to be a close-minded individual. That is why Jesus invites us. If you want to be listened to, first, listen. Jesus is inviting us for a listening revolution for us to be authentic. The end of the gospel says, the road that leads to life is narrow, for indeed, it is not easy to listen. Before coming here, I passed by the office of the, the shrine office, and I met a beggar telling me that he is waiting, she is waiting for somebody else in the office. And I was a bit bothered because she has been there for quite some time. And I, when I went inside the office and I talked to somebody else, he told me, Father, she is always here every day. She's asking for something. And then after that, I realized, I went outside and I realized that perhaps the beggar, while she needs something, the deeper need of that beggar is somebody else who can listen to her story. And I just wasted a few moments about her story. I was not able to give something for her materially. But for a time, I listened to her. And when I listened to her, I knew something deep inside of her is being satisfied. And I learned a kind of a revelation of the true God in our midst. Karamihan sa mga tao ngayon, hindi na nila kailangan ang kausap. Ang mas kailangan ay yung taong makikinig at iintindi sa kanila. Sapagkat yun ang pagpapatutuo ng tao. Yun ang pagpapatutuo ng Diyos. Amen. Please stand. Christ promises that the narrow gate leads to life. Let us come to our Heavenly Father with the trust and confidence of the prayer our Lord taught us. Let our response be, Lord, open to us the door of grace. Lord, open to us the door of grace that the leaders of the church may guide the flock to the door that leads to life. We pray. Lord, open to us the door of grace. That as a community, we may treat one another with respect, consideration, and love. We pray. Lord, open to us the door of grace that we may carry out God's will by our compassionate dealings with others. We pray. Lord, open to us the door of grace. That the sick and those suffering from various illnesses may find strength and healing. We pray. Lord, open to us the door of grace. That the faithful departed may be raised with Christ. We pray. Lord, open to us the door of grace. In silence, we pray for our other intentions.
we pray. Lord, open to us the door of grace. Heavenly Father, create within us sincerity of heart so that we may love and respect others as you treasure them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, that by the example of St. Aloysius, we may take our place at the heavenly banquet, clothed always in our wedding garment, so that by participation in this mystery, we may possess the riches of your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ernesto, our Bishop, all the clergy, and the community have gathered here before you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Aloysius, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, let us pray to the Father like Jesus. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other God's sign of peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Brothers and sisters, behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the God who is listening to our prayers, the God who knows our problems, our worries, our anxieties, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Sino kayang 
Let us pray. Bring us who have been fed with the food of angels, O Lord, to serve you in purity of life and following the example of Saint Aloysius, whom we honor today, we may persevere in constant thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly kneel for the prayer for vocations. O Father, you desire, you desire all, all of us, us to be happy. Steer up the grace of our religious, religious vocation, vocation in the, in the hearts, hearts of many men and, and women. Grant, Grant to them the willingness and generosity to give of themselves, themselves their lives, their, their time, and their, their talents to the service, to the service of, of Jesus Christ, your Son, your Son our, our Lord, Lord and Savior, and, and to his holy, holy Church. Many, many more men, men and women go forth, go forth as priests, deacons, brothers, brothers and sisters, to, to bring, bring the truth of our Catholic faith to all to others, all others so, so that soon they too may know, may know you better and love, and love you more, and serving and you, serving be truly happy. happy. Amen. Oratio Imperata, merciful and compassionate Father, we confess, we confess our, our sins, sins, and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness, forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other See us through this through crisis, this crisis and, lead and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant, Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy, Holy Mother, Mother of God. God. Do, Do not despise our petition in our necessities but deliver, but deliver us, us always from all dangers. dangers. O, o glorious and blessed, and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calunsod, Pray for us. Saints Arnold Janssen and Joseph Reinademitz, Pray for us. Kindly be seated for a few announcements. We are inviting married couples who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries this year and who wish to renew their marriage vows in our upcoming Renewal ng Bayan 2022 on Sunday, June 26, during the 8 a.m. Masses. You may register via www.bit.ly slash Shrine Renewal ng Bayan or visit the Shrine Office after the Mass. Our daily Masses and devotions for Novena here at the Shrine are as follows. Mondays to Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Sundays at 6, 8, 
10 and 11.30 a.m. and 4 and 6 p.m. Devotions for Monday, 6 p.m. Devotion to the Holy Spirit. Tuesday at 6.30 a.m. Devotion to Christ the King. 6 p.m. Devotion to Padre Pio. Wednesday, 6.30 a.m. Devotion to St. Joseph. 6 p.m. Devotion to Our Mother of Perpetual Help. Thursday, 6 p.m. Devotion to St. Jude. Friday, 6 p.m. Devotion to the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. Saturday, 6 p.m. Devotion to Jesus, the Divine Word. Our confession schedule, every Saturday, 5 p.m. and every Sunday, 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. outside the shrine near the main entrance. Thank you for your support, Reverend Father Ronnie Chrysostomo SVD, Shrine Rector. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have listened to the word of God, receive his body, go and live in peace. Thanks be to God. saints, with prophets and martyrs, with holy Mary and Joseph, with those who came before and those who will follow, we gather here today, one body in the a sign and sacrament of Christ. So may this flock, this church once more gathered, faithfully follow its shepherd's voice to be a living son of the love of God and neighbor. We gather here today, one body in the Lord, a sign and sacrament of Christ.